What up? Just uh, thought I'd do a uh, you know a, a nice Sunday night stream in between uh, episodes of the Ink Master Marathon. You know, Sunday night is my flagship stream. But, uh, you know, I didn't think I was going to do one tonight. Wearing my new Death Squad t-shirt, courtesy of Brian Redband, the king of podcasting. You can get your very own at shopdeathsquad.tv, I believe. Don't hold me to it. And no, I don't get a cut. There's no discount code, Earl69 or something. You got to pay full price, just like I did. Welcome to the business. I am not watching the Oscars. They might as well just name that the uh, Annual Pedophile Awards and Sexual Groomers. But yet I'm the bad guy. Uh, I don't even think the Iron Claude was uh, nominated for anything. ACDC 5150, yo, yo, yo. It probably should have been, but, uh, you know, Mickey Rourke and the, the wrestler got a lot more critical acclaim than Iron Claw. Um, I mean, I'm not saying Zac Efron. I, you know, I think if they would have went hard, the movie would have done better in terms of awards. Like, you know, the wrestler went hard. You know, it showed you what a a real um, look into the life of a, a down-and-out broke pro wrestler, whereas the Von Erichs were kind of glorified. You know, they were fucking drug addicts and... You know, Fritz von Eric wasn't the greatest guy on earth. So, yeah, uh, I could have done without seeing John Cena naked. But he does have a great body. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... I ugh. But, you know, I thought it would have been funny if they had Ted Levine come out and do Buffalo Bill. I do not ACDC 5150. It'll suck. You know, it was supposed to be Ronda Rousey. If I'm not mistaken, they might have even started filming that. But when she lost her last two fights, and she didn't just lose her last two fights. She got her ass beat. And there's no shame in that. But um, it was pretty... I, so I don't think you could have a movie with her being this dominating ass kicker when Holly Holm, you know, basically soccer kicked her head back to America from Australia. And then I think Amanda Nunes beat her in like, what, 48 seconds or something? What up, Ross Incognito? Hit the like button, please. And, uh, you know, we're just going to do like an hour stream tonight. I, I don't stream for five fucking hours. I don't have that energy to uh, make you uh, listen to me for longer than maybe an hour or so. You know, I want you guys to want more, not less. Um. So a shout out to the streamers who can do four to five hours. I I don't think I could do that under any circumstances. But like Pat Dixon can do four hours like that. So uh, Steve-O sitting with uh, Bosa and uh, Burrow at the fight. I didn't see the fight. I like Steve-O. You know, I brought him up one night at the comedy store and he was very nice. He... Uh, you know, got off on time. He apologized because he thought he ran the light. I'm like, you actually did under your time. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think that... I mean, I love Super Chats and all, but I do think they are ruining streaming because you just kind of... You know, you become 
and I'm not even really talking about any stream in particular, but you become like almost in a trance to them and you don't read. And listen, you know, I read 90% of the questions, whether they're paid or not. But some of these streams, they won't read anything other than super chats. So you, the whole show is based really on you guys where I can just talk for an hour and, uh, well, you know, I, I was talking with someone last night about Kevin, like, you know, the funny thing to me is he trolls the trolls and I could probably do the same thing, you know, oh, you want to say I suck? Guess what? You can five bucks. You want to see, uh, you want to say, uh, you know, I don't know. Jeff Ross is funny. 10 bucks. So, he, you know, I just think it's funny that I don't think that people trolling him don't realize they're the ones getting trolled. What up, Big Ben Bones Jones? Maybe my longest distance fan from Australia. Good evening, Secret Snake. Good evening. You've been vouched for to be a moderator, but I don't think I need any more moderators. My stream's pretty uh, pretty chill. We got a couple trolls here and there. I had someone uh, leave a comment, I think, on the stream from yesterday. Uh, I'm as funny as ball cancer. And I bet that guy thought I would take that down. I leave it all up. You know... Because trolls want to be acknowledged. And when you don't acknowledge them, and I guess I just acknowledged them, but that's where you fuck with their minds. So, uh, you know, we're a, we're a happy stream here. No bullshit. Although I will be doing Hackamania. Oh, I don't uh, take anything I see seriously on the internet whether it be my stream or my videos or reddit i mean i don't go on reddit a lot to be honest with you so i don't uh i don't do anything that's not going to make me feel good so i know if i go on reddit right now and, and look up my name in the search engine someone is going to say i'm not funny or whatever and it's like i don't i don't need that in my life i'm funny man I closed out the main room of the number one club in the country last night for an hour. Yes, it is. Uh, sorry. I still don't know directions. There we go. It's a Vince Neal, Steve Stevens era uh, tour from uh, 1993 Japan tour. Now, when I go upstairs... Um, you will see what's right next to that is my Jack Lambert autographed. It's a pretty nice picture. Uh, we have a Steve Parker. We have a hockey question in the house. See this? And I'm just getting a a DM from a very well respected. Hockey writer. So let's talk hockey. And to those of you who don't like hockey, I do apologize. But uh, hold on. Let me just answer this question. Uh, I don't have a... Uh, um, a producer, so I got to answer uh, DMs uh, live on the air. My bad. If the Kings play the Oilers in the first round, what's your take? Personally, Kings could win in six, or they could lose in four, to be honest with you. I'm a King fan, full disclosure. And um, that's a tough one because the Oilers, you know, the Kings the last two years have lost to the Oilers. And their problem was they took too many penalties. And that's where uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl will just chew you up. And you've got Bouchard with the fucking 
Al McGinnis like bomber uh, on the power play, and, and now you got Corey Perry, you know, doing what he does, and uh, you know, a lot of nice secondary scoring. You know, Nugent Hopkins, Hyman. Kane when he's got his shit together. Uh, you know, the Kings, if you look at their lineup, this is how big of a King fan. Oh, my God. McDavid, I, well, let me finish this. Uh, here's the Kings lineup in the playoffs, if everyone's healthy. You've got first line is um, Kopitar, Byfield, and Kempe. That's a great first line. Second line is an awesome secondary line with more – to know and Arvidsson when he's healthy, but you know, his back's pretty fucked up, but I'll put him in there just for this third line is probably going to be Dubois, um, LaFerriere and Fiala. Well, Fiala might go to the second line and then Arvidsson goes to the third line. And the fourth line is kind of a, uh, a wild card line of Lazat at center. Um, Trevor Lewis, and then maybe Turcotte, maybe Kaliev, uh, Grunstrom when he comes back. So I guess it would be Grunstrom, Lazat, and Lewis. Defense, you've got Anderson Doughty, Roy Gabrikov, and then you've got three guys who basically rotate. England, who's the big banger for them, and then they alternate with Spence and Clark, and, you know, Talbot and Big Save Dave and Goal. So, you know, they're going to have to, with that lineup against Edmonton, they're going to have to play a pretty perfect game which is tough to do. And the goalies probably be Talbot uh, first. Um, you know, it, it, they can beat Edmonton, but, uh, you know, it, it's uh, going to be um, interesting. Um, so... You know, I, I mean, you know, rivalry, you know, it's a rivalry. I mean, I think the Kings problem, and it's why I wanted Maroon, for, you know, I love that pickup Austin got, because no one's really talking about that trade, because it's not a sexy trade. Um, they needed a guy like Maroon on the fourth line. I mean, I would have loved to have seen a line of Lazat or Lewis, either one, at center with Grunstrom and Maroon. Because Grunstrom's too nice. Like, you can tell. He'll get feisty, but you got to really push him. Maroon, I think, enjoys being a bully. So he would have been a good counter to Kane and Perry. So, you know, I mean, the Kings beat Vancouver handily this week in Vancouver. And then last night, they kind of laid an egg against Dallas. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Earl doesn't need a hockey stick. He has the hog. <laughs> Well, thank you. Jerry Barker. Uh, sorry. Uh, the questions all look alike. So sometimes I miss. If I miss him, just ask it again. Um, uh, well, let's get to Jay. The streamers least dependent on Super Chats have the best shows. Uh, you know, I mean, I think MLC is a great stream because Kevin plays this like Vince McMahon-like heel character. Uh I mean, obviously, you know, he's got a thousand people in a stream. I mean, he probably makes a thousand bucks a day in super chats. That's impressive. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I definitely don't depend on super chats. If I did, I'd <laughs> I'd be in trouble. But uh, I mean, the only thing I like about super chats, to be honest with you, is it is nice to get paid a little bit for your time and talent. But you know. I made enough money last night at the comedy store where I'm good. By the way, this stream is uh, not sponsored by Powerade. So, uh, yeah, that's my thought on uh, the streaming world. Uh, how often do you do beach cops? You know, really, whenever they ask me... Um, uh, oh, cool. I, Jerry, it's funny you say that. I'm obsessed with uh, truck driver videos. There's this one guy on YouTube. I don't know him, so I, I, I don't get a plug by, or a cut by sending you to us. I think it's called Alex the Trucker Guy. 
I've always wanted to sleep in a long haul trucker just for one night, but then that would be pretty weird. Um, so, uh, well, Danish and O'Neill is no longer a thing, but uh, O'Neill and uh, DeWitt do the pork report, which I did, I think, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I don't think he is, Steve, because Dowdy's pretty old. I mean, old by, uh, you know, I think the top defenseman. I mean, uh, it would probably be Kale McCarr. Yeah, Trevor Moore is a good player. You know, I think he, he doesn't get the credit because, you know, he's from Thousand Oaks, California, which isn't exactly known for, you know, uh, producing hockey players. Kind of reminds me of one of the OG guys I used to follow in the 80s, the great Craig Cox, who was from, I believe, Chino, Chico, California. Uh, oh, oh, shit. Hold on. You know what this means. Uh, lambda, lambda, lambda. Hello. Uh, with a gag ball. I don't know what that means. Uh, lambda. Uh, a lot of crosstalk in the chat. The great William Zune. I can make your dream a reality. Jay Santos. Cheers, Earl. $5. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay. That is your third super chat. I appreciate that. See, you don't talk about it and they just come. I'm going to quit the stream right now. How many jobs pay $5 for 15 minutes of work? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you very much, Jay. You're always welcome in the stream. Uh, well, I just love... Like, I think because my hours of comedy are so in the night, I'd be a great long haul trucker because I would, I'd have no problem driving 10 straight hours at night. Um, and then you sleep in the daytime. Like you just, I would have the blackest trailer, like blackout drapes, blackout windows. I mean, it would look like four in the morning at noon in my truck. Um, and it's just crazy to see the advances in the, the lowest be chilling right now. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for your 10th super chat, Jay. Uh, but the, the advances in the uh, big rig trucks is pretty impressive. Um, what up, SCVID? show i'm just going to call you sc for brevity um well i'd have to make sure i drive at night um because some of those uh custom trucks like the car hauling vans that is lois lois is right there let me get out of the way maybe you can see lois there she is she's drinking water right now she gets thirsty uh that is lois uh, no, she has a heart murmur and uh, fluid in her lungs, unfortunately. So uh, she's not dying, but like it's a permanent cough. Me and Gail, her her dog mother, um, you know, we've bought her all the medicine that you can. And it ain't helping, but it ain't hurting. No, I mean, I just love truck stops, you know, like there's that one truck stop on the way uh, L.A. to Vegas. It's like a Walmart of, you know, truck stops. And, uh, you know, I would love to get on the CB and chop it up, you know. Breaker 1-9, Breaker 1-9. We got a bear in the air off a of mile marker 40. Come on. Uh, oh, thank you, Jay. I mean, she is... Uh, I mean, you don't really get better from a heart murmur, to be honest with you. But <laughs> she, uh, you know, the dog that Lois replaced, the amazing Chloe, she had a heart murmur and she uh, passed in like four months. So, uh, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's funny when they do those truck videos, like the previews of the new 2024 Peterbilt. They go into all these great details, and then they're like, yeah, and there's a CB. Anyway, um, so uh, I my friend had a CB. Red Buttons, kid, if you remember who Red Buttons. Lois is tough. <laughs> Now, it sounds horrible, but she's really happy, to be honest with you. Um, and Adam Buttons, I'd go to his house on Friday nights, and we'd talk on his CB, and I would just quote lines from Convoy. I like Breaker 1-9, Breaker 1-9, this is the rubber duck. We're at my mocker 240, come on. Any big rigs out there? Spider Mike, Pigpen, come on. <laughs> Sometimes there would be a guy named Pigpen we'd talk to. It's like one time I spent six hours calling the number 8675309 with every conceivable uh, area code. And we finally found a Jenny in uh, Northern California, but she was a real bitch. Uh, this was, I was probably, probably about 20. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, you look at like the movie Convoy. I, well, Chris Christopherson had his, uh, I think he had a Mack truck in the movie. Um, so uh, he had a sleeper in his, but like uh, the truck that Comedy Store paid regular, Spider Mike, the great Franklin Ajay, his truck in the movie didn't have a sleeper, nor did Burt Young's. Um, Uh, what comedian passed away the other day? Oh, my friend Nick Lanny, a young comic. You know, uh, he wasn't the funniest guy, to be honest with you, but he was new. But what I loved about him was he was always trying to get better. I mean, he did what I was doing in the early days of my career uh, when I would literally drive to San Diego to do an open mic for free. So you're driving five hours total, two and a half there back. Um, and, you know, you're paying for food and gas, and, and I guess that would be it. And, you know, you know I, I was spending money to do comedy, and that's what he was doing. Um, but, uh, you know, his car the other night hydroplaned, and three cars hit him, and I just, I hope he died instantly, to be honest with you. Um uh, you know, you know, he didn't feel it, but uh, he he was a good uh, he was a good dude. You know, uh, B J McKay, and this is a best friend bear on my way to Dallas. Who's providing my palace now? You don't get that in other super streams. Me singing the theme from B J and the Bear. New dreams and women too. A BJ McKay, and this is my best friend, Bear. I'm off to Dallas. Who's providing my palace? I got to be honest with you. Um, th th that's all I remember. Um, what's up? What's up, Jose Bras? I liked Convoy in terms of the, I think it showed a pretty realistic view of at least the people who do long haul trucking, you know, like the older guys in the movie, you could tell they weren't actors. They were probably legitimate truckers. Um, and I thought, I mean, that convoy was, uh, Sam Peckinpah's final movie. And apparently he was so fucked up on drugs, Coke, that he literally wouldn't leave his trailer. So a lot of convoy is improv. Like they were just, you know, obviously they trusted Ernest Borgnine and, Chris Christopherson and Ali McGraw. Um, so they were kind of given free reign because James Coburn was brought in by, I believe, Peckinpah himself, who said, hey, man, I, I'm struggling. Can you finish the movie? So I loved uh, Convoy. Like, that is probably a top five guilty pleasure movie. Like, I've seen that movie hundreds of times, and when it's on, I always watch it. Because uh, Ernest Borgnine was a great bad guy. You know, he had never really played a bad guy before. You know, it's very similar to, like, Kurtwood Smith and um, Ronnie Cox and RoboCop, uh, which is why RoboCop is so great, because that you could tell they really sunk their teeth into being a bad guy. And you could tell Ernest Borgnine was just having fun as Sheriff 
Dirty Lyle Wallace. Um, my opinion on Convoy growing up around a lot of those types. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, you know, when they were on the run from Ernest Borgnine, you, you know, they showed the clips of, like, the older truckers getting tired and, um, you know, like the one older trucker with the mustache and, and the scraggly beard. Like, he looked like a trucker. And his face was so tired looking. I thought it was great casting. Um, you know, is it, it's not very realistic that a giant convoy can, you know, drive across like five states and not be stopped at some point. But, and there's no CGI in the movie, you know. I mean, it's, they actually had to film a convoy driving through Arizona and New Mexico. Um, and like the bar, uh, the fight scene and uh, the diner, it's not the most realistic, but, uh, I mean, Kurtwood Smith is like the, I guess you'd call Kurtwood Smith and William like the B version of Gene Hackman. Like, he's good in everything. Like, he made that 70s show watchable. Um, yeah, Sheriff Lobo, uh, man, that's that's a show I haven't uh, um, heard in a while. Um, Jim Michael Vincent, White Line Fever. Yes, great. Uh, I mean, that's a prime can you fly, Bobby? Clarence, no. Earl, you think the Exorcist and the P Men movies? I don't. What are the P Men movies? I got to be honest with you. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, absolutely the X. Because the Exorcist, you know, once again, like Convoy, there's no CGI in the Exorcist. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was like the P Men. Was that a new superhero franchise? Uh, I think. <laughs> That's Lois saying, hit the likes, hit the likes. Uh, yeah, you burnt the fucking money. I love Clarence Boddicker. Come on, Sal. The Tigers are playing Detroit tonight. I never miss a game. Just kidding. Guns, guns, guns. Uh, yeah, the... Uh, Sheriff Lobo was pretty bad. Almost as bad as uh, McLean Stevenson's Hello, Larry. Uh, early, uh, yeah. So I do think the uh, Omen and The Exorcist stand up. You know, it's like the scariest movie I've ever seen in movie theaters. I'll never forget 1980. Me and my whole family, my sisters and brothers. I think our parents dropped us off. Um, my Bloody Valentine, uh, Mr. Roper. Um, and if you watch My Bloody Valentine now, if you watch it in the dark, you know, it's, it's a small budget movie. I don't think anyone in the movie was really went on to success. Although the one kid with the curly hair, he was one of the sheriffs in Rambo. Uh, I'm tried giving Lois... Uh, Honey, and that's not really working. So I'm just, me and Gail are experimenting with uh, various um, uh, elixirs, but so far nothing. I guess Lois does sound like she's smoking. Yes, rest in peace, Lanny, uh, uh, from uh, Blood In, Blood Out, Big Al. I was lucky enough, we roasted Popeye the other, maybe a month or two ago, and I, was asked by Popeye himself to play Big Al, and I nailed it. Sorry, Steve Parker, I did. I think I forgot your question. I know you mentioned you haven't seen Letter Kenny, uh, almost like a roast battle. Uh, K. Trevor Wilson is great and a great comic. Well, he wasn't so great against me in roast battle. No, I'm just kidding. I love K. Trevor Wilson. Like he's a genuinely sweet man and a fantastic roaster, a great comic. Uh, MVB was great. I don't know what that means. Uh, Don Knotts all day. I know I'm a Norman Fell guy, to be honest with you. And my favorite Three's Company guy uh, was uh, definitely Larry, the horny neighbor. 
Dr. Nova, I know what you're doing. And I see you. You're not going to get this in any other stream. Listen, asshole, this isn't some bullshit biker trip. The great Tex Cobb and Gene Hackman talking in the yard. Tex Cobb was a good actor, man. I mean, he really looked like a Vietnam vet. That is one of my, that's my favorite war movie, Uncommon Valor. And most people won't say that, but um, I believe John Milius helped write it on the DL. And the great Wings Hauser was a producer on it. Uh, uh, your favorite was Felipe. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, ACDC. I, uh, you got to really spell it out in the stream for me, guys. Uh, William Zoom, Felipe from the Village People. Um, hello from Italy. Furbo, well, well, that's, see, that's what I love about this stream. Here I am in West Hollywood, and Felipe um, is from, Felipe Furbo is from Italy. Uh, let's go to the Regal Beagle. Fuck yeah. Tex Cobb is great. Yes, he was. I mean, you're a great actor. You know, you want to see good acting by Tex Cobb? Um, check out the two-part episode. He's only in the first part uh, of Miami Vice Season 3, Down for the Count. That's the two-part uh, episode when uh, John Deal, who played Zito, left the show. And he left it on good terms. So they kind of let him not write it, but pick how he died. And it's all based around boxing because uh, John Deal was very much into boxing. I think he boxed, you know, competitively. Um, and in the first part, Tex Cobb is training ex US Olympian Mark Breland and uh, inappropriate Earl alumni Pepe Serna kills him. So I believe uh, in that episode, one of the big uh, henchmen uh, was one of the few people in Miami Vice. I think Joe Hess, I want to say was his name, who was a karate expert in real life. He was four different characters in Miami Vice and all four times he got killed, I think. Uh, well, I wouldn't start with down for the count. I mean, I would definitely start with the pilot, which is, was a two hour, basically a two hour movie. Um, and then, you know, there's some episodes that I could recommend, uh, you know, uh, certainly the first couple seasons, uh, was, um, were better than the last. I mean, uh, golden triangle is a great episode, uh, where the buses run is a great episode. Uh, lend me an ear with the great villainous John Glover, uh, it's a great episode. Hold on, hold on. J Man Jack coming in real hot, gifting five memberships. The uh, John Deal and Angel, a that was where I first. Well, I guess Jaws Two was where I first had a crush on. Donna Wilkes, but Angel was, uh, you know, that movie didn't do very well. It came out, I want to say the same year as another very similar, no, actually, Vice Squad came out in 1982. That is a great, guilty pleasure, uh, low-budget movie, uh, Wings Hauser, Season Hubley, was Kurt Russell's wife, um, and a lot of interesting character actors. Fred Rerun Barry plays the sugar pimp Dorsey. And uh, Wings Hauser cuts his balls off um, <laughs> with the greatest line right before he cuts his balls off. He's like, well, I can't say the word he used, but he's like, you know what you blank pimps don't do? You don't handle your bitches. And then he cuts his balls off. Thank uh, J-Man Jack for gifting memberships. Yeah, I mean, in terms of Miami Vice, um, you know, I would say the first two seasons are near perfect television. A uh, Prodigal Son is a great uh, episode with Penn and Teller, Gene Simmons. Um, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, so many great guest star. You know, the great Luca Bercovici uh, playing the guns dealer Hans Wexler. Uh, that episode is very good because it also has another person who is, I think, three characters in Miami Vice throughout the scope of 
the show, uh, the great and recently deceased actor Ned Eisenberg. Um, um, yeah, well, you know, Jay Man Jack, you guys do enough. I mean, yeah, the episode with Bruce Willis where he's a Stinger missile dealer. Uh, Gene Simmons dipped his wick in a lot of things. Uh, but I appreciate that, J Man Jack. And see, this is where I'm different than most streamers. Uh, you can always come in here. It's a free stream. Uh, don't feel obligated to give me uh, super chats or gift memberships. Um, you know, I want, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to turn them down, but like, I want this stream to, I want you guys to come into this stream not feeling obligated. Like William Zoom said it the best. Uh, I'm a bartender. If you don't like the service, don't tip. If you do, whatever. Uh, who's more seeing? Oh, Jesus. Uh, well, tr Trump's in there too, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, this uh, debates are going to be like whack a doon, man. Uh, it's like, I don't really talk politics in here, but uh, yeah, I mean, I love Art Lee Emery. I mean, I'm much more of a GD Spradlin guy. Who literally didn't start acting until he was 50. If you, want, if you don't know who G.D. Spradlin is, uh, check out the basketball movie One on One with Robbie Benson. Where he plays a sadistic uh, basketball coach. Like a Dean Smith-esque uh, character. And then in my favorite sports movie. Now you'd think my favorite sports movie would be uh, Slapshot. But my favorite sports movie is North Dallas 40. Um, and G.D. Spradlin basically is playing Tom Landry. Um, just, I mean, he's good in anything. Um, but he, yeah, I mean, he played the corrupt senator, I believe, in Godfather 2. Uh, and, and really crazy the career he had when you consider he started acting at 50. Um, so uh, I, I love character actors, as you know. Uh, or, well, yeah, I don't mind talking politics. I mean, I do think there will be at least one debate. You have to have one debate. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, David Lee Roth is coming off a little bitter, I think. He probably wants to do Van Halen. but And Van Halen, Wolfie, I've seen him play live a couple times. He's pretty good, man. Like, would he be getting the opportunities he got? If his last name was like Jackson, yeah, probably not. But that's the fucking business. And you know, when I saw Ma I saw Mammoth play, uh, they opened up for Metallica, SoFi Stadium. They were very good. And, uh, and then I saw them two nights later headlining their own show. Um in uh, Santa Ana and they fucking killed it, man. So, you know, I got, uh, no hate on Van Halen. He's good, man. Now, could they do Van Halen? You know, I'd like to see Van Halen with Roth, Wolfie on guitar, Michael Anthony on bass and, you know, Alex on uh, drums, but I don't know, uh, necessarily if people would go to see that without eddie in the band i mean it was kind of his band uh the goon movies i the goon movies were a little too uh cartoonish for me but uh you're not the worst i mean they're a guilty pleasure movie for sure and yes roth does love his marijuana there's no doubt about that uh somewhere in cia headquarters some assistant is dipping out and dusting off an old Kennedy contingencies and trying to figure out how to format it to modern times. Probably. Uh, but da Daniel, it doesn't have to be that. I mean, I don't want to drag you guys into my negativity, but like, you know, you brought it up. Uh, so I would say that, you know, roast battle, but that's why it sucked after I left the show. You know, and, and that sounds like really cocky to say, but, um, you know, name me a battle after season one where you're like, that's a great battle. Um, but that's what Jeff does. You know, he goes from show to show, he pillages it and then moves on to the next show, leaving everyone else behind. And he just picked the wrong guy to do that to. Oh, now I'm not, I mean, you know, I mean, 
I mean, season two was cool because my friend Frank won and, you know, he literally worked as a door guy across the street. So it kind of like was a good story, but like season three was horrible. Um, and, you know, I, you know, just, you know, I, I feel very much the way I feel and I don't take back one word because I don't talk shit about anyone. I, I talk facts. And when you're dropping truth, no one can really come after you. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, those guys are all getting up there, man. And, you know, Piercy is doing the Brett Michaels thing where, you know, he tours and he sells out where he goes. I mean, he plays like small theaters. He doesn't play like gigantic venues. And he probably makes more money. You know, I don't know what he pays his band, but I'll guess 250 to 500 a show. He gets 10 grand. When if he goes to Rat, they probably all split it five ways, except for Carlos Cavazzo. He probably would get a little less. He's making maybe three grand. Not bad, but like 10 grand is better. Uh, just for laughs. Um, Montreal being canceled. I mean, it's never good when a comedy festival gets canceled, especially the biggest one in the world. I mean, I'm going to sound bitter. I mean, I've done just for laughs twice in roast battle. I've never done it as a comic. But, you know, I think that... You know, the last decade, the, the show turned into, or the festival, and they had great comics, but a lot of the shows were not good comics. They were like, let's book comics who check a box. You know, like my one friend got New Faces, uh, who's a trans comic, and they're not the funniest. Like, there's a hundred funnier comics than this person, but... She checked a box. And, you know, and that's like with late night TV shows. You guys who aren't like really get the behind the scenes comedy world and you shouldn't, uh, you know, the funniest comics aren't on television. It's like, okay, we need a fat person to check that box. We need um, a gay black person to check that box. I mean, I had a manager tell me the other day. Literally the other day. And I was set up with this manager through someone who has repped everyone in the business. Like, So I was brought in on a super, you talk about super chat. This was a super vouch. Come see this guy. He's really good live. And this manager was very nice, but she basically, she's 25 years old. She doesn't have a lot of clients, but she's young. She's hungry. She's obnoxious. She's kind of a bitch. She's the perfect manager. And she's like, I just can't use you. You're, you're too polished. Like, that's this business in a nutshell. I'm literally told I'm too good. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? She's like, I can't mold you into what I want. You're unmoldable because you obviously have been doing this a long time. That's obvious. So I can't gel you into what I want. It's like, well, I'm already funny. What's the problem? And it, and she was nice, and I appreciated her honesty. But, um, you know, that's just uh, that's the business in a nutshell. So, in terms of just for laughs, I do think a large part of the reason why they went under is like the show doesn't mean what it used to mean because the it's not the best comics in the world anymore. It's all right. We need a fat person. We need a trans person. We need a gay person. We need a a comic with no arms, you know, instead of going, okay, we need the funniest 50 comics from LA and New York. They're getting it. Now, comedy is subjective for sure, but, um, you know, that, in my opinion, that's why they, and I get it. You want like, but it's a casting show. Now, most comedy festivals are casting shows. That's nothing to do with comedy. I mean, if that if that's something to do with comedy, I would have been on Just for Laughs 10 years ago. And I was kind of justified because uh, Jeff Singer, who used to run the festival, he came up to me a few years ago, uh, and I had a really good set. And he's like, I'm sorry, Earl. I'm like, for what, man? You were always nice to me. He's like, you should have gotten it. I'm sorry. So that made me feel a little better, I guess. Um, uh, damn Earl, I need to drop in here for some sanity. Ray has Joey C on and it was a bloodbath. Uh, you know, Sheriff, we don't talk about the dabble in here, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, I, I, 
I have nothing against Joey C. I don't know him. You know, we did one show together, frankly, and he was nice to me. He was respectful, which I liked. Uh, but I, um, yeah, I, I, I'm good on that. Uh, but, it, it, well, welcome, Pam. I am. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is a fun chat. Um, see, I'd rather have 27 people in here than have to have someone from the Dabbleverse and we talk a shit. And yeah, we'll probably make a couple hundred bucks doing that. But, uh, you know, I made about, I'm not trying to impress you guys. But at the comedy store, when you do the main room, you split the door with the other comics. And last night it was sold out. I think there was, uh, let me see, let me go on my Instagram page and see how many comics were on the main room show. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let's take me a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine comics on the show splitting a lot of money. So I made enough last night where I don't have to do the dabble in here. Uh, so... Well, I mean, I, I just like, it's it's just not, um, it's just, I, I don't care enough. Like, I, and once again, no disrespect towards Joey C. I don't know, but I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I don't do that in here. Uh, what up, chat? Pew, pew. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a straight shooter and, uh, you know, Pam, I am, uh, but it's true, though. Like, you know, and frankly, I'm in the worst fucking category you can be in. Old, not old, but like older, normal looking white dude. You couldn't pick a worse category to be in. I had another manager, uh, and this was when I was 45. Uh, and he worked at a huge three letter uh, agency, um, ICM. I'll say it because he's not there anymore. And and they are huge. Like if you're repped by them, you're getting movies and TV and like the real deal. Uh, he's like, dude, I'd love to sign you right now, bro. Um, you'd be the funniest guy in the comedy division. But I take you upstairs to my bosses and they're going to be like, he's too old. He's 45. We'll have maybe a 10-year career out of him. And it's like, well, that's fine. Make money off me for 10 years and then dump me. Like, I don't understand that thinking. Um, but I get it. Like, you know, they want someone like Matt Reif, who's 28 and young, and, you know, they can mold him into what they want him to be, you know. But, uh, you know, that's the business. Uh, hello. I don't know if Lee Harvey was a straight shooter. I think he was trying to kill the guy in the front seat. Pew! Uh, Tanner wanted Elise. Tanner now wants Ari Jane. Yeah, we don't do the dabble in here, Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Unless, you know, that's uh, Super Chats are uh, on dabble versus are $100 and up. It's the only time I'll panhandle, which ensures that no one will ask dabble verse questions. Uh, J-Man Jack, dabble free zone. We rule. <laughs> It's a 4K camera. I got no boogers. Um, Earl is the better shape than 90% of today's pudgy somethings. I am, to be honest with you. Uh, yes, they do. Sheriff, uh, Pam, I am. All right, we're just getting some crosstalk. Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. I don't know who AJ is. Uh, and thank you, uh, J-Man. Um, there is a theory he wants to kill. He was out to kill Connolly. Probably not. I mean, I'm guessing that he wanted to. Yeah, we don't do dabble in here, Lambda Lambda. No Airy Jane or Joey C. Or uh, Although I, I will give uh, the BYB, the quad father, uh, a plug because he tried to help me get monetized. Um, so, um, you know, a shout out to... Um, the quad father for trying to help me uh lambda 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 you don't have to stop you just have to pay a hundred dollars for all dabble verse questions so i'm pretty sure that's going to stop you from asking questions uh well i mean i don't you know i gotta be honest with you i i don't know anything about them uh i mean 
although we don't dabble in here, I, you know, I, I think, you know, the dabble verse world is, uh, you know, it's only about 10 podcasts when you think about it and they've all shit on each other. So they need new people. So a guy like Joey comes in and he's fresh meat for everyone. And I don't think Joey realizes that, uh, well, you know, I do read all the chat, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, because I want you guys, you know, listen, I know I probably would make more super chats if I said, okay, I'm not reading any uh, any of the chat. You know, I'll just sit here and wait for super chats. I mean, that wouldn't be a good stream either. Uh, I don't think, uh, I, you know, I think he meant to kill Kennedy. Uh Hey, come on, Dr. Nova. We, we don't talk about Michael Skakel in this stream. Come on now. Uh, that That's $200 if you want to ask questions about my cousin's murder trial. I mean, I'll keep it real, but you got to you gotta show the money, honey. Um, Gina, Bobina, I believe I have both moderators in here, so no shenanigans. They run a tight ship. Hey, we got 36 people, 26 likes. I mean, we're moving and grooving. Maybe Sunday nights are the flagship stream. Uh, I'm a free speech absolutionist. I don't block for words, but please respect. Yes, you know, I just, um, and I realize, I've said this before, that I, I'm sure I could make quadruple the money I make in here if I just started talking shit about everyone in the Dabbleverse. Believe me, I would be the best roaster in that world, you know. Ain't no one comes close to my roasting skills in that world, but I, I'm not going to zoom roast people like that's no balls. You want to do a roast? I'll be at Hackamania. Say something to my face. Let's see how brave you are. Then I doubt you would, um, you know, and I, I never really liked roasting to be honest with you. You know, I, I, when Roast Battle came into my life, I was 15 years into comedy or 14 years. I had no TV credits. So I was like, fuck it. If I got to get on TV calling someone fat, put them in front of me. Um, I don't know, Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. I mean, you know, I, I think he was sales pitched. Uh, he was a stoolie for somebody. Uh, <laughs> Kruger ran to Dr. Nover. You're out of control. Uh, yes, I did go to... Uh, uh, massage parlors, uh, you know, I mean, they were just easy. Like you, everyone wants to get laid. And so instead of taking a girl out to dinner and the movies and roses and chocolates, let's go to a massage parlor and get jacked off. You're in and out in about 22 minutes, sometimes quicker than that. Um, I once had one of those girls, you know, I was there for a massage and, you know, to get jacked off. I'll be honest with you. Um, Easy. We we don't talk about that guy in here unless it's that's five hundred dollars. Um, so, uh, and you know, so I'm on my back getting a massage, and then she just starts licking my ass. Like doesn't even ask. Like licking deep into the booty, and then she tried to kiss me, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. By the way, she was a great kisser. Hello. She did more than lick my buttocks. Uh, you know, I am good with money. So I don't have to beg for money here. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, blasted, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I did blast it. Bla I, I was blasted. Um, Ross, yeah, I mean, well, you know, I'm not necessarily proud of doing that, but. This is an honest stream. There's no bullshit in this stream. Uh, well, I mean, most of this, you know, you can tell the massage parlors from the legit ones. Probably the funniest massage parlor story is, uh, this is going to be local, so you guys are probably going to be a little lost in the sauce, but on the corner of Santa Monica and La Cienega, at one point, there were three massage parlors. So I go to the first one, and I've been around. You know, I know the deal. You know, what they do is you lie on your back, and then they kind of, you know, they do give you, like, a little back massage, and then they, can I massage your buttocks? And then they start, like, they let their uh, fingernails, their nails kind of, like, slowly touch your balls. And then if you move, like, 
to give them more room that then they're then you know it's on but when they talk a lot they're cops so i go to the first one and she was talking a lot like i felt like i was getting set up so uh, i said i just want a massage um and then i was so horny i went to the second one same thing you know they were talking a lot i would go this is a sting operation i just want my lower back nothing else and then i went to the third one and i don't think they've gotten the undercover cop there and then i i shot a geyser it was like when uh, curly sat on the oil geyser you know you know what i'm talking about so uh you know, that was probably the last time. That was my breaking point of massage parlors. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> um, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of them have gone out of business. And I'm glad. <laughs> uh, Earl, can you tell your last man standing at the gangbang story? I mean, I've been to a few gangbangs, to be honest with you. Uh, so I'm not sure which one uh, you're talking about. Uh, but here's the here's the funny thing. Before I got into comedy, I was pretty jacked. Like, I never did steroids. But, you know, when I was probably 25, I was incredibly muscular. Like, think Marky Mark, Calvin Klein underwear ads. Uh, and... One time, Tim Curry um, called me up from um, Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I in the in the I was on bus bench ads everywhere in L.A. and I I was like I was I was in my underwear, but like this, and I was fucking jacked. And uh, Tim Curry's like, are you the man in the billboard? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I left my home number on this billboard. What a fucking idiot. And uh, he's like, can you come over right now for a massage? I'm like, I'm good, dude. And then the next day, a girl called. Are you the man in the billboard? I'm like, yeah. She's like, do you do massage? I'm like, boing. And I go over to the Century. Is it the Hyatt? Century City Hyatt, I think. This is the hotel from the movie Point of No Return. And I said, meet me in the bar. I, said, I want to make sure this girl's not a complete animal. Hold on. Let me get to this because the chat's moving right now. Ross Dogs, $5. Can you grade Ray DeVito's Roast the Stuttering John and part-time comedian Stevie Lou? Well, I mean, Ross, I... You know, my rule is, you know, all Dabbleverse questions are $100. But since you gave me something, I'll cut you a break. Uh, I thought it was horrible, to be honest with you. I don't like Zoom roast battles when both people are there. But, you know, that's just beating up on someone and they don't have a chance to reply. Like the Chad Ray uh, thing was good. The Barry Ribs, Pat Dixon thing was good. Because, you know, it's give and take back and forth. But. You know, it's like if I was sitting there roasting, uh, or ro right now, if I said, well, I'm going to roast Jimmy Carr again. I just read Jimmy Carr jokes. How good would that be? So I was not a fan of it. I like Ray, but I, that that was pretty bad, to be honest with you. The, Tim Curry wanted the hog. So I uh, thank you, Ross Dogs, very much. Um, she left. On, oh, so I'm massaging this girl for two fucking hours. And she had an amazing body like um like wow she was like an executive probably early 30s and she's down to a g-string and like a 10 body and she takes her g-string off and she's like doing the massage thing where she's basically looking back she's basically saying touch me like in the no-no area and uh, i i like was really giving her a good massage and then she fell asleep and i, I just walked out of the room i didn't even get paid i was so fucking scared uh, how big was her dick? Uh, about as big as your mom's. Let's roast. Just kidding, Dr. Nova. Uh, well, I don't roast people online. Uh, I don't roast people. In a, you know, because I could sit here right now. Let's say I'm roasting. Um, uh, let's say I'm roasting Chad. Because we're friends. We know each other and all that. And I'm just, okay. And round starts. Now, uh, 
Chad drinks so much he uses a wine cork as a butt plug. Like, <laughs> and Chad's not there to defend himself. Like, how? What? I mean, I roasted Jimmy Carr and K. Trevor Wilson on international television. That's how you roast, bitch. I don't even know who I'm calling, bitch. Uh, uh, so, uh, what? Hey, oh, uh, I did. Oh, a hundred percent, William Zoom. I because I lived in Century City, like so. I had about a five minute drive, and I shot a load on my bath towel, like you wouldn't believe. I could have put out the uh, fire. Uh, Earl, when's the last time you made white on some Tuts fun bags? Jesus, that's out of control. Uh, um. I mean, uh, I, I don't talk about my sex life. Um, but I, I will give $1,000 to anyone who can name uh, the about the 10 podcast guests I've slept with. Hello! Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, we're sniping no one, Mr. Blue Sky. This is not uh, the, the dabble verse. So I'm not sniping. I don't snipe on here. Uh, you know, this is I've talked for an hour about nothing. And I haven't had to snipe one person's television show. Uh, my friend George Perez won Yo Mama. Uh, he's a killer. Uh, check out George Perez Comedy. Um, he's an awesome dude. And he brought me up last night on stage at the Comedy Store. So please check out George Perez. And uh, thank you, guys. This, uh, you know, this is definitely, I think, the, my most popular stream in terms of numbers. Um I don't know why. I would think Sunday nights people are uh, winding down, uh, and uh, but uh, here we are. So I, I do appreciate, um, Mr. Blue Sky. R U U. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Earl is bang the bottom of the 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 all the broads and maybe Tim Curry. I did not bang Tim Curry. I can assure you of that much. Uh, I refresh and you have 39 like hold on let me turn the TV off hold, hold on one second uh, 20 second halftime break Let me see. Where did we leave off? Or um, I refresh. I mean, you know, this is pretty. Forty-one likes, thirty-two people. Is it mind-blowing the numbers? Uh, probably not. Um, oh, do we have a uh, saboteur in the uh, chat, Mister Blue Sky? Is he not real? It's all right. I'll take fake bots in here. You know, uh, what am I gonna do? Uh, let me see here. My autocorrect has made me spell your name wrong several times, Henrik. So we got some cross talk in here. That's fine. Hit the likes if you haven't done so already. Every now and then I like to get to 50 likes just to make me feel good about myself. Uh, I've done a podcast with Stacy, but I've never, <laughs> I've never been in her stinky pinky. You guys are very horned up in here. Like I thought I was horny. Uh, I'm surprised someone hasn't asked me if there's going to be any gash at Hackamania. But uh, I'll be there. I'm just doing the comedy shows, man. I'm not doing the podcast. I'm not going <clears> to... <throat> fuck that, man. Because Vegas is a decent comedy city. So I can do the comedy show, run around, do some shows, and then come back. And I think there's an open mic contest. I would like to judge that. Uh, because I like to... Um, give feedback to younger comics and it's not like i'm some incredible joke writer but i like to say hey you know you might want to do this you might want to do that and don't do this don't do that i could probably teach a comedy class on what not to do uh acdc he knows the deal uh, i don't know i'll guess no <laughs> would you box for fifteen thousand dollars for 15 million i would because uh, that could pay for the surgeries uh maybe william zoom i don't know no live showing of the hog. Uh, no, uh, I'm not going to show my dick. I mean, there's no amount of money. Well, maybe a thousand. Uh, um, I got some sharp edges for you, Doctor Nova. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I've been approached about doing an OnlyFans, but uh, I'm good on that. I mean, if I was really broke and needed the money, you know, like Ted DiBiase says, everyone has a price. Um, oh, Slice, I didn't... I like Gash just because it's so dismissive and, and like, so gross. Uh... Well, I don't care about the rich bags and the dabble bars. Like, I, hey, if, if David Chandler comes in here, great. But, like, I'm not going to chase after, you know, a $50 super chat. Uh, I mean, Kim Conlon is very attractive. She was on the same show I was on uh, last night. It was The last three comics were uh, Kim Conlon, George Perez, and me. Uh, well, I'm good with my money, you know. And I make a decent living at voiceovers and... You know, last night I made a nice amount of money and um, uh, you know, I don't, so that's another reason why I don't have to uh, like beg for super chats or memberships or whatever. Like, yeah, I'll take them, you know, fuck. I mean, it, like I said, it is, you know, I've done an hour and five minutes, you know, it's nice to be, uh, I guess, tipped or whatever you want to call it, but I don't beg for it. You will never hear me say, I got to hit the goal. We need $200. Uh, I did not have a dalliance with Kim. Oh, I thought you, I'm so blind. I thought that's a Kim Coates from Sons of Anarchy. Um, wait, are you talking about Mr. Perfect? Oh, Ted DiBiase. A red, I was like, Red DiBiase. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, there will be. No, I'm I'm not organized enough to do a Skakel fest, but uh, you know I, I think a perk of the memberships of uh, my YouTube is you do get to come to the comedy store free of charge, and I give you a tour after. And uh, I'm not used to being able to sit back. This is a nice chair. Shout out to uh, uh, GT Player. I, they're not sponsors, but. Uh, this is a very comfortable chair. And my new prescription is pretty strong. I can actually, uh, for $1,000, I would bang Madonna. For $65, she's not horrible looking. I mean, I've fucked worse. <laughs> uh, he didn't deny the Kim Cattrall rumor. I wish. No, I've never met Kim Cattrall. Kim Coles? What about uh, Kim Richards? Now we're talking, Daddy. Uh, so... Uh, the facts of life, Lisa Welchel, uh, like uh, Blair, she was cute. Uh, or if we could go back in time and uh, Virginia Matson and fire with fire, like I don't have a type, but man, was she attractive to me. Uh, Vince McMahon's out of control. I mean, shitting on people's heads. <laughs> and like, like uh, what a gross human. But people don't care. He could walk out tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw and he'd get fucking applause breaks. Hey, we'll end the stream if we hit 50 likes. So let's get 50 likes. I don't know Cindy Margolis. Wait, was that the internet girl? That's not the same girl, is it? Is that his girlfriend right now? Fire with fire. Good luck finding it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a you know it's a teen angst movie, and the black kid in it was also one of the warriors. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know she was still around. Um, but, I mean, Virginia Madsen back then was like, uh, wow. Pam, I am $5. I've seen some wild pics of you. So I question if you're a Speedos swimwear guy. Uh, thank you, Pam. I, I'm a Calvin Klein tight. They're not boxers, but the uh, briefs, I guess you would call them. Uh, my dick is too big for Speedos, if you really want to know. With, I say that with respect to St. Ranger. Uh, Jay Santos, what are you talking about? Uh, who? It, it was the end of the world for who? Uh, Earl, do you ever meet Gilbert Godfrey? I met him once at a roast battle in New York. Oh, Karen Margolis. Okay. Uh, all good. 
Uh, Pam has not seen it. I can assure you of that. Uh, yeah, I, well, the one Kim Richards, she was in that show as a kid with, I think, Little Eddie or something. I don't know. I liked it. Um, let me see. For, oh, shit, man, Furbo, that's a deep cut. For $1,000, would you, Marcy Free, and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Marcy Free is the singer from King Cobra. Now you might say, well, no, Earl, the singer from King Cobra was Mark Free. Not anymore. Uh, great voice. Never say die, Iron Eagle. Never look back. Never say die. Never say die. Oh, Iron Eagle. Now or never, never say die. What a voice. I always like the video for Never Say Die because Louis Gossett Jr., an Academy Award winner, was in it. And you know he fired his agent after that. Like, who the fuck are these guys? That's uh, And uh, Comedy Store paid regular Tim Thomerson is uh, the pilot, uh, Jason Gedrick's dad in Iron Eagle. Um, Chappie. Chappie Sinclair, I think, was his name. Yes, Marcy Free is... Mark Free is a woman now. How much for Blue Iris? Oh, man, there ain't enough money in the world. Uh, respect, Blue Iris. Respect. Uh, would I bang Judy Gold? I did not, and I would not. Uh, I'm an AEW guy, Kip Smith, so I, I got I, I could lie and bullshit you because I know enough, but I don't, I don't really care. So are you guys not hitting the likes because you don't want the stream in if I hit 50? Okay, I, I see you. Uh, well, Iron Eagle was like the uh, top gun with no budget. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure some favor was exchanged of, hey, we'll give you, we'll give you points on the movie if you're in the video with King Cobra, and, and it is a good video. What the hell do you think we are, man, Marines? Uh, no, no. When he was making them all do push-ups, and Mark Free got up and goes, "What the hell do you think we are, man, machines?" And Lewis Goss is like. That's what you gotta be if you want to be a marine, uh, a big pussy and a little pussy. Wait, that's a that's a boon shakalaka joke, man. Why do rabbits have quiet sex? Cause I got cotton balls. I got eyeballs. What's twelve inches wide and long? Not a damn thing. I miss Boone, one of the great all time characters of the comedy store and he has tragically not been seen in like i think three years so we all believe he's dead so uh i know i never i don't think i saw uh, iron eagle uh, two i'm not mistaken but i don't think the original cat was tim thomerson and jason gedrick in it uh eric stoltz you know he's a working actor he probably like if you look up his name up on imdb I bet you there's probably five or six indie films he's done that you you know you'll you just never see unless you're looking for them. Uh, boom shakalaka. Um, the funniest boom shakalaka story. And for those of you who don't know boom shakalaka, which I expect to be many, Boone was like a homeless dude who would hang out at the comedy store, and he would sell. He would go buy stores in the daytime and steal, and then he'd come to the comedy store and sell the shit at night. He did have some organs. I think he gave Hinchcliffe a computer for showing him his dick. He was in love with Tony. Uh, and then one time he broke into someone's car and he stole an iPod. And then he tried to sell it to the guy whose iPod it was. That's the great comedy store legend, Big Wave Save Dave Taylor. Uh what happened to Stephen Dorp? You know, who knows? I mean, a lot of these guys, you think they quit acting, but then you, when you look up their name on IMDb, you know, oh, they've done like 10 independent films. Like uh, Stallone has a few films I'd never heard of before. You know, they're just straight video, real fast cash grabs. Uh, you know, that usually that guy, Randall Emmett, is uh, producing. It's like total money laundering. Um, so. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, you know, Boone had some interesting views on Dan Bilak, uh, Matt Edgar, Dan Madonia. Um, so, by the way, I put out a uh, on YouTube tonight a the Earl Skakel blood in, blood out uh, acting scene with me and the great Tommy Three Plates. 
I'm a good actor when the role is written for me. Trust me on that one. All right, we got an hour and 15 minutes. We're going to do an hour and 20. So get those questions in Sunday nights. I'm sure someone's streaming right now. I have no idea, and I don't give a fuck. Uh, I mean, we almost got 50 likes in here. That's pretty good for me. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And 27 people, you know, it's not a thousand people like for MLC or Shuley, but you know, we're a happy bunch in here. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like I said, I give Iron Claw two reviews. If you don't know the story, it's a great movie, eight and a half. If you do know the story, it's a seven. You know, they just took a lot of creative liberties, man. You know, like they insinuated that the Von Erich curse is because Fritz Von Erich changed his last name. But, you know, maybe the curse was because he came to the ring as a fucking Nazi. That could have had something to do with it. I mean, and then, you know, they leave out the last brother suicide because the director said, well, I didn't want to make it too sad. What's well, a fucking sad story? And I realize it's not a documentary, but I mean, I, I thought it was good. But I also thought, you know, in my past life, I think I was a casting director. Um I just thought they were all too small to play the Von Erichs. Um, yes, it is Pam I am to watch older movies. Uh, the Wildlife. Uh, I mean, Schultz is a great actor. You know, he probably got fucked up from being taken out of Back to the Future. I mean, I think they literally filmed like 60% of Back to the Future with him. And, you know, it's like that manager telling me I'm too polished as a comic. You know, Stoltz was fired from Back to the Future basically because he was too good of an actor. Like, it wasn't funny. He was, like, playing it straight. Um, I mean, Stoltz, I mean, you know, I liked uh, The Wildlife. It's a cute, campy, 80s romp movie. Um, oh, I don't think it was all of it. I mean, I think it was, like, 70 80%, you know, and then... I think Michael J. Fox got out of his contract or something where they allowed him, to, or maybe he didn't get out of his contract, but you know, he worked it out where he could literally film family matters in the daytime and back to the future at night. It's like Bruce Willis was in 30 something at, in the daytime. And then uh, that was the name of that Bruce Willis movie, right? Uh, it was civil shepherd. Uh, and then he would film die hard at night. If you notice, there's very few daytime scenes in die hard. And I think that's because he was literally, uh, no, but what was the Bruce Moonlighting? I'm sorry. I knew it wasn't 30 something. Uh, I mean, Bruce Willis was literally going from the set of uh, Moonlighting right to Century City and uh, Die Hard. So, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I love Eric Stoltz. Uh, well, well, I tell you what, I mean, for $1,000, if you're ever in that Los Angeles, I'll take you to lunch. What if I was so desperate I was doing shit like that? And I know someone would probably pay me. Hey, I want to hang out with Earl at the comedy store all night. Uh, you know, I never watch Moonlighting, to be honest with you. But uh, my favorite scene from those type of shows was Insane Elsewhere. You know, you guys know me. I'm a white show. Hey, let's get to 50 likes, man. I don't ask you guys for much. It doesn't cost anything to hit the likes. Uh, was in St. Elsewhere when Salami from the White Shadow was in the elevator and the elevator opens up and he sees Coolidge and he's like, hey, Salami, what's up? And Salami was like, I don't know you. Welcome to Hollywood, baby. Uh, big fan, Earl, but $1,000 seems high to me. <laughs> it is high. That's why I'm asking for it because I know no one will do it. Can you imagine if I'd charge someone $1,000 to have lunch with me? I mean, that's like whack. That's Dabbleverse land. Oh, well, all right, well, I, I, I like how someone took their like away, you bastard. Uh, I'm not going to end the stream. I'll tell you what, if we get to 50 likes within the next, now I feel like steel toe, if we, if we get to 50 likes by the minute 20 mark, I'll go to 130. We'll go to a one hour and 30 minutes. Oh, is that you, Lambda Lambda? You're a real saboteur. But if we don't get to 50 likes within the next 45 seconds, stream is over.
See, I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for some financial goal. Uh, come on, get into your uh, dark accounts and hit the like button. Uh, uh, yeah, for $2,000, you can... Uh, I'm actually hoping it doesn't get to 50. Hello! Uh, all right, you've got 20 seconds. Oh, shit, man. Well, all right, we're going another 10 minutes. And if you take away the like, it ends automatically. So uh, we are in overtime now. Uh, 51, not now. It's And 52 pickups, my favorite movie. So if we hit 52, I'll go for seven hours. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, no, I, I got no beef with Spielto. I'm just kidding. I mean, I don't know those guys. I think I've talked to Aaron once or twice on uh, Twitter on DMs. I, I mean, I got to be honest with you. It was nice to me in the DMs, but it was nothing more than what's up, dude. Uh, never talked to April. Uh, I try not to. Yeah, so long, sport. You fix that shitty radiator speaker? Hello, Alan. Welcome to the first and last 10 seconds of your life. That's one of my favorite endings of a movie when the car blows up. Uh, at the end of 52 pickup, uh, seven hours. No, see, we're at 54 now, so we're we've passed. Uh, I don't think I could do a seven hour stream. Like, I, I, I mean, I, you know, listen, I think in streaming world, uh, I have, I think my peak is an hour and a half, and then I get a little tired. Uh, you know, Leather Daddy Cap, 52 Pickup came out in 1986. If you haven't seen the fucking movie, then, you know. Uh, hey, someone just took away their like. Stop it. Uh, I'll be back, Bennett. Why don't you have Bennett do it? Sounds like something he'd get off on. Do you know what today is? All right. If that if I see 51 likes to stream it, I got my finger on the end stream right now. There's saboteur. 